do you like to live dangerously, standing right in front of the enemy as you deal damage to one another, and even take that into the end game, melting them slowly while you still stay strong? Well, have I got the build for you. This might just be the quickest build guide you've ever seen on Path of Exile because I tend to go for the simpler things, you know? I don't delve too much into the details. Not unless I really want to do some nerd work. So, quick intro though. My name is Fitz. I play Path of Exile along with a lot of other games. Subscribe if that gets you interested. Follow us on Twitch. And let's head into the build. Okay, so for the pros of the build, it is easy to start, you know? It's pretty straightforward. You can get Stormburst once you're gonna fight in Merveil at level 9, I think. Or once you're in that area. And then, you know, gear progression is simple as long as you can get a lot of elemental damage and a lot of basically all of that uh, modifiers that can increase your spell damage. That's going to be really great. And uh, a lot of your cast speed as well is also going to be really good. And then, of course, it is a forgiving build with all of the sustain that you can get on this build. It is so friendly. Like, it is so casual friendly. Like, I have barely died to this. I mean, I mean, as you can see it during the previous clip, I mean, it is just so tough. And it's really nice and uh one thing as well is that it does not need helmet enchants like what is that i forgot what, what is that the only enchantments that i know on helmets are you know aqua breathing <laughs> i mean aqua affinity respiration of oh, minecraft enchantments oh my god <laughs> but yeah i mean this build does not need helmet enchantments for it to work and uh, it has a satisfying close, uh, up close playstyle, you know, where you're just channeling your storm burst and you're right in front of the boss as well. And he's dealing damage to you, but you're also taking all of that damage while you're constantly dealing damage back to him. It's like, uh, it's almost like one of the most intense stare downs, if you will. <laughs> and, you know, it's fun because it's also off meta. That's one of the pros that I see about it because. It's not like the gear that you require for it is going to be in demand, so none of it is going to be expensive in a way. And if ever you're going to need to have something expensive, it's usually just going to be, you know, covering your resistances, you know, some rares with high tier res, and that's basically it. Okay, now for the cons though. Of course, there will be cons with this. Um, Stormburst is pretty slow to lead start off with. Uh, you can... You can compensate for that by maybe going Absolution first until you can get a 4 link on... Uh, Stormburst and unless you forget about Stormburst completely and then just you know continue with Absolution until you go into Guardian instead of Inquisitor <laughs> But of course it's gonna be up to you and of course crit can be hard to scale initially since that's basically what it is But if you're having problems with that you can always go with elemental overload first and then just scale your cast speed and elemental damage there and it has not been tested for current ailment changes because I mean the stats that you see right here, especially the uh, durability stats, are from, you know, the previous leagues way back. So, this may be a little bit more brittle now, so, I mean, you guys can adjust uh, the build how you want to. Both of them are going to be, both of the POBs are going to be in the description. Okay, guys, I had to cut myself short there because I was just going on way too much, actually, to be honest. Oh my god, I have not made a long-form video in so long, but... Basically, here is the skill gem setup. You have Stormburst, Duration, Infused Channeling, Arcane Surge, Lightning Pen, and Physical Lightning. This is the optimum combination that you can use for Stormburst given this build uh, configuration. But, you know, depending on how you can build it, of course, it's going to be up to you. For Auras, you have Clarity, Determination, Zealotry, and Enlighten. Meanwhile, you know, Enlighten is a bit of a no-brainer, but... Um, the... Other two auras that you can use, you, you you can swap out clarity for something else if you don't want to use clarity because you have vacant flask sockets here anyway, or flask slots. You know, you can change them to what you want to. But determination and zealotry are gonna be core. So you can incorporate maybe your your small passive clusters with uh, the the uncompromising and the other one for zealotry if you want. To, uh, to squeeze in one more aura, but for me, this was working fine. And, um, what else? Uh, Molten Cry for the guard skill enduring. Well, Molten Cry, what the hell was that? Uh, Molten Shell for the guard skill. And Enduring Cry for just, ju uh, just some added extra HP, but I never bear, I never really used it that much, anyways. Assassin's Mark is gonna be the main curse here, though, since conductivity doesn't work as much so 
it's better to just scale off the crit with uh, Assassin's Mark and then Boots you have Smite on because of course you know Smite is going to be what you're going to use to trigger your fanaticism with or if you want to use um, Shield Charge whatever attack but Smite is gonna be the best at least in my opinion because it also gives you the lightning damage buff so of course that's gonna help out with your DPS and then for the gloves, I have a Sigil of Power and Frost Shield that are being supported by increased AoE and uh, duration because it at least gives you a little bit more wiggle room. You know, it allows you to walk around a little bit more and of course the AoE is bigger so you can basically like set up your own mini arena for the bosses like your own domain expansion, <laughs> so to speak. And then my mobility skill of choice here was Flame Dash because it was way more instant. You can use it way more frequently. Because with Frost Blink, Frost Blink keeps the or it keeps you channeling Stormburst without a problem, but uh, it has a longer cooldown compared to Flame Dash. So for me, the better mobility of Flame Dash is the winner there. Okay, now for the clearing side of things, though, um, if you want to go with clearing, you can go with Impulse's Broken Heart, but keep in mind you're gonna have to look for a little bit more dexterity somewhere, because I mean. If you're not using Impulse's Broken Heart anyway, you don't want you don't you're not gonna have a problem with it. Like if you go with Doriani's prototype, then you don't have a problem with your dexterity. So if you're gonna go Impulsa, get yourself a little bit more dexterity, but it's gonna be pretty easy anyway. You can just you know grab this dexterity node, this dexterity node, or maybe add a little bit more from the rare since there are a lot of rares here. And you can swap out Mark of the Shaper anyway if you want to, but I mean it's a hundred thousand DPS, but I mean, then again, you know, if it's gonna be that valuable, then by all means. And that's basically the core items here. You have Doriani's Catalyst because you have elemental damage leech as life. Huge amount of elemental damage and you can use it so early in, in the game, like once you complete the campaign, which is basically at around level 70 plus or 75, you can already start using Doriani's Catalyst, which is gonna be a great boost in damage and sustain because you can leech your storm burst and you have a lot of elemental damage, a lot of crit strike, uh, crit strike. And then if you still want to go with Mark of the Shaper as your uh, ring, then you can just match it up with uh, an Elder ring as well to give you that 70% increased spell damage. But everything else is basically, you know, Titanium Spirit Shield just to get your ES up and then just getting resistances everywhere like this is, you know, this is this is a nun tier helmet that you can get yourself some crusader gloves with some resistances again you know decent boots jade amulet of course because you know that's where you're gonna try and get some of your stats from and then yeah that's basically it i mean i didn't even know what i was gonna craft this with before but i rolled with that and one thing that I would advise though is to get cast on crit uh, abyss jewels because they will help out in getting your damage way up because uh, once you start getting more cast speed, you you actually have a little bit more chance to get your crit up because you're you know you're doing more uh, damage. So that's also really nice. Flasks are up to you actually. I wanted to go with roomies because I mean it's a little bit more armor. You have a little bit more block. No problem there. Cinder Swallow, if you can get some fire damage on your uh, on your spell, this is going to be perfect. You can deal a lot more damage with that. And you know, the last three flasks are up to you, so that's why I love this build. It's just so flexible like that. Okay, now for the end game build, that's where things change a lot. Because once you go Doriani's prototype, that's where you're going to start and drop as much of your lighting resistance as possible, which is going to be your main source of damage. So however you want to do that, that is up to you as long as, you know, as long as you're going with Doriani's prototype, you just have to drop it like it's hot. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, you know, I just went with random uniques anyways. You know, just go with Choir the Storm. Get a little bit more crit strike, it's also pretty nice. And then still going with Mark of the Shaper. You can drop this at this point, uh, despite it giving you 300,000 DPS. It's not going to be an issue, like, literally. Because if you go up here to the configuration, you don't even have fanaticism on and you don't even have shock. So once you go with fanaticism, boom, it doubles. Once the shock applies, it just scales juicily. Is that even a word? But well, now it is. Like if you go for maximum shock, look at that. And that's with guardian and pinnacle boss level uh, resistances and damage reduction. So it is an insanely 
hidden gem and it is beautiful. And when you once you go to the tree, as you can see, uh, not much has changed. Um, you still go around here, but once you get the clusters though, you can go with uh, the Thunderstruck, Obershock, and Doriani's Lesson so you can get even more sustain. And since you're doing more damage, you can get a lot of leech as well. Look at that, you have almost 500 flat life regen, and then you have life leech on hit, which is almost a thousand per second. That is really, really strong. And if you even want, and if you want even more sustain, rather, you can swap out any of these with Storm Drinker, because Storm Drinker will do a little bit more lightning pen and will also leech, or your lightning damage will also leech as energy shield. So that is also a dual form of sustain. So that is why this build is so tough, so forgiving, so amazing. But yeah, that's basically it. That's how the build works. I mean, you know, let me know if you guys are going to play this build. Please make a video about it. Please share your experience with it. I want to see other people have fun with the build. Like, it has been such an experience for me making this build for myself. Like, it is one of my most proudest achievements apart from my bleed build that I made before during Sentinel League. Which was, you know, one of the best things I've ever made as well because I was... I farmed up a mage blood solo with it, you know. Holy! But now... You can't do it right now. <laughs> with the amount of nerves that we've been getting. Oh my god! But yeah, like... Please let me know. Please tell me you enjoy the build if you're gonna play it. I mean, have fun with it. Do what you want with it. Show me the improvements that you're gonna make because I may not be able to play as much as I would like to because I have work. Uh, I can't know life Path of Exile anymore. But that's one of the saddest things I've ever had to say, actually, on on cam. <gasps> oh my god, but yeah. So, let me know if you guys have any other thoughts on the build. You know, it's it's gonna be an amazing thing, and you know, like I said, you sub on the channel, follow us on Twitch, and I shall be seeing you all then.